everyone. I posted up uh, my banner and buttons on Canvas for Teachers a couple days ago and I got a bunch of questions. So I thought it might be quicker just to make a little video to answer everybody's questions. So the main one that I got was why would I do a banner instead of doing a Google slide? Um, the banner was still made on Google Slides. It was the same way that we make the slide. I just changed the dimensions so that it would be uh, narrow and smaller and instead of having like the items on here be clickable I chose to add buttons underneath it and the reason why I did that is because I had a couple kids in the spring that were using a tablet and I know notice with the kids on the tablet that they weren't able to click on the links on the slide so it just made more sense for me to switch them over to buttons because then whether you were on your cell phone or a tablet or a computer um, all the links work the same so just really quickly to show you that I basically went into Google Slides and I changed the dimensions and to do that it's in file and then you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you choose a page setup and then you just change the dimensions to 16.67 by 4.17 and you choose apply and then it will make your slide um, long and narrow like that and then you would just file download it as a JPEG so that you have it as an image and then you can bring that image into canvas okay so that was the change from Google Slides and that was my rationale for doing the buttons and then um, some people ask me questions about like what do I have on my daily agenda like what are in these buttons so the meet Miss Lawrence button is just like going to be like a YouTube video telling them a little bit about myself, so something that they could watch before the first days of school. Um, some fun facts, some silly stuff, and then also like an expectations video will be another option they can click on. And it's going to tell them like what I expect from the course and that kind of stuff. The daily agenda is similar to the whiteboard that they would see if they were walking into my physical classroom. So I'll just click on it. Um, for example, if this was like a ra random day, um, usually when they meet you at the door, they say, what are we doing today? And this is like my learning target, my objective. I want to learn how to make your argument stronger. I teach eighth grade language arts. So I kind of put it in like kid friendly terms. And then I tell them why we're doing it. And then these are the activities that you would see on the board, like your things that you're doing. I've got a discussion board post as their warm up. And then they're going to have a live lesson. And then we'll have an assignment. And I did find that when I linked everything for them, that they could just click on stuff, uh, they were a lot happier. So that was one change that I made in the spring, was to make sure that I did links to everything, no matter where I wrote it. Okay. Um, modules. My modules are set up by standard. So it's just the standard and then all the activities and assignments that go with that inside of it. So, for example, like in language arts. Um, argument essay is my module. I put the standard as a header and then as the course goes on I'll just add all the files and activities that go underneath how to teach them how to write an argument. And I've got one for informative and one for analyzing text and citing sources and writing a research paper etc etc because I want them for modules it's like their skills what what they need to be able to do. Um, and then my class library, again, because this is uh, language arts, I've got the celebrities, got caught reading. It's just um, thumbnails of the picture, and if they click on the picture, it will take them to the text for the story. So for their assignment, they're going to need access to the text. And then this is just kind of where it's all can be kept in one space. And they can just click on the story. And then this is all in a table, all the buttons. They're clinkable, they're all inside a table. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let me show you how to make a button. Because that was the other question was how do you get buttons to come on there? So if you go to your page and you choose edit, you'll see these dotted lines here. It's because this is a table. I just changed the border of the table to be zero so that they don't you don't see any lines. So I'll make another one. Uh, down below just for example. I'll go to table and then let's say I want my table to be 
I'll have four buttons going across. Okay, three down. So I got my little table here, and you see the lines are like full hard lines. When I publish this, if I don't change the border to zero, it's going to put the lines around it. So I'll just save that to show you. Let me scroll down, and then it comes up as a table. So all you got to do to take that off is just change your border from thickness 1 to thickness 0. So we'll go back. We'll edit this again. Okay, let's say I want to put in um, a button. So in my table, I'm going to insert the button as an image. I'm going to go to Canvas. I'm going to add it to my course files, this image. And I'm going to grab them from my computer. So I'm going to choose Upload. And let's say I'm going to make the uh, night book my button. Open. OK. And then I'll scroll down once it's successfully uploaded. Choose Update. These are the top results. OK. And then you'll notice that when it goes into the chart, it doesn't make it the size you want. So you have to click on it and then kind of resize it by um, clicking on the handles and dragging in or out, depending on how big you want it to be. And then I'm going to add some text. This is uh, actually it's not called night, it's just called night. So this is night. So that's my button. And I've added some text to go with the button. And I'm going to center it all. And I'm going to make it bold. And then so to link it so that it's going to that book, I've got to open it up. Oh, I did the outsiders. Okay, well, we'll pull up the night real quick. I go to night, um, full text, or if I do night like PDF, it'll come up. Okay, and I check, oh, yep, that's the one I want. Perfect. Click on it, copy the link. I'll come back to my button here. I'm going to choose to link to URL. Remember, I've already copied it. I'm going to hit paste and then insert link. And then I'll also make my text highlightable as well, uh, clickable. So highlight it, go to insert URL, put my link in there. Insert link. Okay, so when I save it, now this will be a button instead of a picture because they'll be able to click on it and it'll go somewhere. Um, what else? I want to change my border. Okay, so to, to change your border to not have the lines anymore, you go to Table Properties and you just change your border from 1 to 0. And then you'll get that little dotted line and that's how you know Okay, it's not going to show up anymore. And then I'm going to hit save. And now when I scroll down to the bottom of my class library, this is that table that I started working on. Here's my new button. I click on it and it takes me to where I want to go. Get that out of there. Ooh, I lost myself. Okay, so I hope that answered your questions as to how to make a button and where they're going. I guess the other thing is like, okay, you can also link to not just to websites, but you can also link to places inside of your canvas. So if you wanted to, for example, let's take this table that I've got going here, your student of the week. Maybe it's going to be like a page. So I can go over to the right hand side and choose pages. And I've already have a student of the week page that I want to link to. So now you see that it's clickable. Now I also do my picture too, just to make it easier for the kids. Student of the week. So they can either click on the picture or they can click on the week. Uh, same thing for like, okay, I want my joke of the day. I want them to go right to the page. So I'm in pages. I click on joke of the day. And I'll put my picture linked as well. 
and then I'll save it. So now when the kids, you know, want to go to their student of the week, they just click on it and they can see that page. And yep, yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's how I'm organizing it so far. I might change it again. I think I've changed just like 50 times at this point. But uh, I hope that answers your questions and thank you for asking them. All right, bye-bye.